been pretty chill. Uh, weather's a little dark, but I'm trying to like, there was this little kid book when I used to keep, teach kindergarten that was about the weather. And I would read it to the kids and I realized how good it is to actually be like this, like uh, it would say, today is a sunny day, yay. Today is a rainy day, yay. Today's a snowy day, yay. So I try to take this approach, even though sometimes it's easy to be like, oh, the weather's dark and that means I feel crappy. So I'm gonna try to say, it's blustery and dark, yay. And my favorite dinosaur, oh, it's kind of hard. I really like the veggie eaters, any veggie saurus, and also pterodactyls. And I'll pass to Sem. Hello. Uh, wow. Um, I, today I feel a, a little bit tired because yesterday I was, I kind of not sleep so much lately. Uh, I was praising people at uh, at five uh, yesterday at night and <laughs> couldn't get to sleep. So I am doing exactly what the people should not be doing. Um, sleep is very important. Uh, but I I am so thrilled with the TC Commons and I want to uh, be everywhere, I guess, <laughs> and do everything I can. Um, what what uh, my my favorite dinosaur? Uh, the, the dinosaur is that that um, this kind of dinosaur that flies. When I saw uh, it in the TV when I was a child, it was wow. That's Oh, uh, it's like a dragon. <laughs> and I'm going to pass it to Livia. Thanks, Sam. Hello. Uh, today I'm feeling a bit excited and a bit nervous because I'm flying to New York and there's so much with my uh, visa situation that it's always a bit nervous to get in. Um, and my favorite dinosaur is, I think that the ones that fly always fascinated me too. And also the ones that were underwater, that was pretty crazy. So maybe I would go with them, the ones that are kind of like whales, kind of underwater dinosaurs. And I'll pass to Jeff. Thanks, Livy. Um, yeah, same as Jess. It's pretty blowy and gray outside, but I'm um, glad we have this warm and inviting community to chat with, because otherwise it would be very cold and lonely. Um, and uh, my favorite dinosaur, I would say Brontosaurus, uh, long, long necks. That was just from uh, was the Age Before Time. I didn't really remember that movie. I loved that movie. Land Before Time. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> cool. And I'll, uh, I'll pass it to Sean. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, Land Before Time. <laughs> Stellar movie. So uh, I'm feeling great today. Um, everything, like, I don't have too much going on this week, so I get to kind of just chill a bit more and uh, get kind of caught up in, on my responsibilities. So I feel great. And yeah, so my favorite dinosaur, so I don't know if it's officially in a, a dinosaur, but it's, I, I forgot what it's called, but I just looked it up. It's the Prototaxites. Anyone know this? So this is like, it's an, an ancient mushrooms, ancient mushrooms that used to grow as like giant trees. Yeah, Jeff knows what I'm talking about. And uh, so yeah, there's like all these fossils of these ancient mushrooms that would grow like trees and they don't exist anymore. But uh, around when the dinosaurs were here, they still existed. So I'll go with that one. And um, I'll pass over to Tonga. Uh, hello guys. Um, I I went to the park today and walked my dog, and yeah, uh, it's really sunny here. Uh, I love sunny days, and yeah, I don't understand what we are doing talking about about dinosaurs. Uh, but the only one I the only ones I can think of are the ones from Game of of Thrones. Yeah, and I don't know how they are called. Um, and who is left? Uh, I guess uh, Knopfseldorf. Uh, 
Dan? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can. I, I, maybe I should change my at some point. <laughs> uh, I, I feel good. <laughs> I was thinking about dinosaurs. This is a very tricky question. Um, I had no idea. I, I divided be between raptors, but they are not really nice. <laughs> and just, well, you know, I, I had no idea what the name for the um, testers of whales is. Um, but I had, I, I always had this idea of like, uh, when we had a world, there will be like whales flying in the sky <laughs> as a screensaver or something like that. So I don't know. <laughs> That's what came to mind. Who's left? Uh, Santi, I think. Okay, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful day today here. It was sunny. It's dark already, so uh, we're we're ending the day here. And and my favorite dinosaur is the one from the Flintstones. I think it's called Dino. So that's that's my favorite one. And I'll pass it to Tamara. Uh, it's also sort of evening here, and uh, I feel good. Um, sort of the beginning of my second half of the day, the next few hours. Um, so I'm sort of gearing up for that. Um, I don't know that I have a favorite dinosaur, but I also like the flying ones, and I think that pterodactyls is a really fun word to spell. So I'll choose that as my favorite. Is there, can I pass it back to you, Jess? I can take it. Cray. Uh, what uh, is that? Uh, for me, uh, today is a good day because I I had do I did some mobility exercises, like no no strong exercise, so I my body is resting, so I feel great. And my favorite dinosaur is that one who has three horns. I don't know. If, yeah, that I I was watching when I was a kid, like a. I think that was a movie, but movie for kids, like, and this dinosaur was like fighting against T-Rex and he won. So yeah, I was so happy with that dinosaur. Uh, and I think Chris okay. left, right? Triceratops. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and I'll pass it to Chris. Oh, um, feeling good. And excited for a good day of work, excited. Uh, it's a holiday week here in the US. So my kids, if you see them darting around, excuse me. Um, and my favorite dinosaur is easily uh, Pachycephalosaurus. It's a hard headed dinosaur. Having spent several years in dinosaur land. <laughs> Um, anybody left? Jess, yourself? Well, Chris. Chris. Hey, everybody. I joined a little late. So I'm, I, I'm not exactly sure what the first part is, but I did gather that we're talking about our favorite dinosaurs. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm doing well here, just kind of starting the day. Um, I'm based in Vancouver, so in uh, Pacific time. And uh, yeah, my favorite dinosaur, dinosaur um, I actually like a lot of the dinosaurs, um, but I would say uh, my favorite um, that hasn't been said yet, I, at least that I know, know of, is the, um, the long neck dinosaur, although I don't recall its, its name. But um, yeah, I'll pass back to Jess. I think it's Brontosaurus or Brachiosaurus. I think there's two. I think the Brachiosaurus is a little skinnier. Jeff said the same thing, actually. You guys are dinosaur friends. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Yeah. Thank you guys for sharing. That was fun. Uh, if you have any questions that you think would be fun, I actually made a little list called Meeting Starters. So I would love you guys all share it after the meeting. I'm going to share screen. Um, so yeah, I actually made this list because I think it's fun to share random things. And then, yeah, I was just for fun looking up what, uh, Craig said, Pocky Cephalosaurus, this guy with the little turtle head, turtle shell head. And then what Sean was talking about, the, this mushroom. 
Is this what you're talking about, Sean? Yep, that's it. Yep. Oh, cool. I never, I've never seen these ones. Neat. All right. So on to the meeting. Uh, Sam is joining us today because we have a big topic uh, to talk about. Sorry, that was a horrible segue. Um, <laughs> we are going to be talking about the front end of the hatch and what we think that should look like. And then there's a few other things to talk about. It's I'm looking forward to after this meeting, I have a one-on-one -on -one session with um, Tamara, who's gonna help me organize um, all the things on GitHub and get a little more focused. So I'm kind of open, uh, but we'll we'll give a lot of time to Sam because this is a really important discussion. And then also I thought we could talk a little bit about the vote. Um, the results came back for the launching in two parts. Mm -hmm. I still think there's a lot to discuss around um, some of the parameters, a lot of questions, and just want to hear some feedback and hear from you guys um, your thoughts on what some of the challenges and some of the benefits of that will be. So I will go ahead and pass it to Sem to um, lead us in a discussion of where the tech spec is at as far as developing um, the Hatch application and what the kind of questions are from the tech spec group for the comms group and saying, hey, um, what do you think the best way is to communicate um, in the design and maybe having a video and some other things. So Sem, thanks for being here, even though you're tired and yeah, really appreciate it. So what, what can the comms group help the tech spec with? Hello guys, <laughs> and, and thanks Jess. Um, I, inv I invited uh, Fiore, she should join in, in a few um, minutes because we are, uh, as you know, in the technical group, we uh, are splitting the launch in two. So it will be easier for, easier to focus on first the hats and later the, the rest of the things because this is the first time that we are doing a, a launch line, a launch like like this, and um, we are going to use a new version of conviction voting, a, a, a new version of. This is going to be the first Gardens DAO that we are launching, and we want to make it very well. So uh, it it feels like let's let's first uh, if if we are not able to have everything for uh, December, we can at least have the hatch phase. And it 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 it's, it finds out that uh, it was easier to focus on just the, 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 the hatch phase and also for the legal reasons, it's better this way. But of course, uh, we can still discuss a lot of, of the things. I, I think that we are not yet ready in order to launch the hatch before we we have discussed everything uh, regarding we we first have to demo the the things that uh, how they could be like and later uh, decide um, have um, discussions and in the forum and and decide what things should should be like and then <laughs> we can have the the, the launch um but we can discuss it in the in the second part of the of the call and and this first call and and this first uh, uh, point could be about about what we are preparing okay. from tech in order to to launch the hatch um it is we we are not sure if that that's completely needed but we are going for it because we were thinking that having a, a very good experience for the hatchers will be uh, valuable for for the for the community and we can as we are first focusing on the on the hatch we have been preparing um a design for for them uh, Fiore is still not here. I, I don't know if she has seen my message. If not, I, I will be presenting it. It's a pity because she she should deserve the 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 who is it called? Uh, 
Si, si, si es who, de, who, who, de, who de, deserves it. But I, I am going to, to introduce it anyway. Uh, let me share the screen. Welcome, Jake. Hola. <laughs> And let me see where I've been. Just, just to catch you up, Jake, we just did a little round of um, intros and hellos and our favorite dinosaurs. And um, we are going to go into now. <laughs> you feel free to share yours real quick. And then we're going to we're going into right now the front end, the discussion of what the front end should look like for our Hatch app. And we have a lot of other things to talk about. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for catching me up. Velociraptor. <laughs> oh, two velociraptors in the group. Very <laughs> clever. Okay, so um, we have been iterating over it for a little bit. If you remember the first hatch that we had, uh, the, the first demo that we had the first day in which we introduced the, the pre-sale and everybody uh, had, uh, had TIDA in order to buy test deck. Test tech. Uh, this is a, an iteration over that concept in which we are calling it now hatch and it's not a pre sale anymore. <laughs> well, actually, we still have some pre sales here, but we have to change the, the naming. And the idea is that uh, we could include a, a video uh, explaining what this is um, all about. And, and then you have here the button for contribute instead of by pre-sale shares. Sorry, I, I, I didn't have the time to change that. And also we can have a text that it can be long or, or not so long. And at the end, we have the um, how it is going to go. When the hatch starts, when the hatch ends, when the tokens are locked, and where they are going to be unlocked and how much time do we have? Actually, this should be up, up here. Um, that was kind of the idea that we uh, were bringing. And I'm not sure. Uh, what I wanted to ask is, do you think that, uh, I know that a video takes a lot of time. Uh, it could, we don't actually need a video. But uh, if you think that it could be interesting for, for the Hatch uh, campaign to be something much more similar to what we can see in, in Kickstart or eh, sorry, Kickstarter or other crowdfunding um, websites. And if it's worth to to dedicate some communication resources in into this phase. Can we open um, the, the, the micro so we can talk about it. I mean, what do you think? I think it's a great idea. Yeah, this would be the first crypto project I've ever seen with a video. This looks super amazing, Sam and Fiore and team and Marco. That looks so slick. I love that. I have a background in video. It actually doesn't take a long time for me if I just focus. I obviously could use help with like, what do we want that content to be to put our best foot forward? But I think this looks so professional, so amazing. And I love that you guys already were thinking on this level. To This could be like, sets it apart and differentiates like in how we care for our community and communicate with them. And are you gonna read that Latin for us or? Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any thoughts on the like design or um, how this is looking, how we should be presenting this any other parameters that should be on here? I was wondering that you said that the pre-sale um, is going to be changed, right? It's not going to say pre-sale, right? Exactly. <laughs> this is uh, this comes from the Aragon fundraising, and we have to change pre-sale everywhere. <laughs> Also, um, there is going to be that um, requisite to have CSDK tokens in order to contribute to the hatch. And we have to put that in some way in the, in the design. It's not here yet. But the people, actually, I have it here. So I can show too. Marco has been working in this uh, application 
that it's on the works so people can obtain CSDK by contributing to the to common stack. So we, we will be able to link the two applications. Uh, during, nice. du, du, during the hats, people can uh, contribute uh, in order uh, in order to get the C, uh, the common stack membership, and uh, with the CSDKs, they can uh, be able to contribute to to the to the TEC. That's that's kind of the idea. So that will be like a link and an explainer somewhere here that will take you to that other page, and there we should be able to see the C stack balance. Yes. Actually, when you enable your account and you don't have CSDK tokens, probably we will uh, and it will appear over here saying you don't you you cannot contribute if you are not member of the of Commons stack. Please apply here or something like that. We we still have to figure it out. Um, and of course, uh, let's discuss this, these things in the in the forum because um, we are taking a, a lot of a lot of uh, decisions on how things should look like. And um, I, I am also a little bit worried because I have not been uh, present in in many of the the calls in the in the TEC because I was. Um, working on the on, on the MVP and couldn't attend. But now it's the the group is much much stable now. We have already an MVP so people can work on on different stuff at the same time. It's it's probably better to we have a, a solid basis that we can discuss and we can the, the demos that we have been doing, they are a solid basis that we can discuss. Before of that, it was very difficult because we didn't have that that, that basis. Um, but so in, in order to finish the this first point, we go with that. Uh, we are going to have that video. And I was thinking that it could be a longer text, but I'm not sure if, if you want to keep it short or, or not. We are actually going to have this Connected with with here, so we can have a, a long text a long text if, if we want, um, as you as you wish. So, how do you envision us coordinating between tech spec and comms to like coordinate together to look at the design? And I mean, obviously, we can work on the content side. I do think just off the top, like the text is a little small in the bottom, and the gray and white, like it's kind of hard to read the different parameters. So maybe there's like, we can make it a little bigger in a different way to differentiate some of the parameters, like different colors or something or, um, so yeah, I mean, obviously there's like, this looks amazing. There'll be some tweaks. We need to figure out the most like high power, best content we can put forward, which we can work on as a team, but how, how should we coordinate this going forward? Okay, I think that the the interesting thing is uh, to the, the couple the the two things. Uh, you will be working on the video and the text, and then the uh, and and you you will be responsible. The the commons uh, the the communications working group will be responsible for these two things, and then the other things related to the design. Uh, we can discuss it in the in inside GitHub issues. We still don't have a repo for this specific project, but it will be up quite soon, today or tomorrow. So if you have some, actually, you can also comment in this Figma and and say uh, this should be something else or another color because it's it's not clear or or whatever. The the schema of colors is made by um, by Marco, and what Fiore did is to put the the components uh, together in the in, in the in the places. And um, and well, we we still, of course, if if we can work together, not only with the video and the text, but also in the maybe in the copies, <laughs> I, because we are no we don't have so much experience with putting good copies. For example, maybe instead of 
Token Engineering Commons had, we can put something better here. That would be also also cool. What I, what I suggest is to separate the text and video and the and the implementation of the of the application. Yes. Manner. Uh, are we going to change the colors at the end? Are we going to put the blue color instead of uh, the, this yellow greenish? You know, this is the thing I've been back and forth with Marco about, and I kind of want to just get on a call because I feel like async it hasn't been going so well to like communicate. Because I feel like it's like, yeah, it's kind of starting it like at some point it forked and then it went all that way. And I'm trying to bring it back a bit to somewhere in the middle because I like both. But like, like I said in the chat, um, so yeah, I, if you and me and Marco could jump on, maybe I'm trying to get him on a call because I got to talk to him about something else. But yeah, as far as the design goes, we're kind of at a crossroads of which direction to go in. Marco wants to go this way. I kind of want to bring it back a little bit. So yeah. Um, so yeah, if, thanks for you. asking. And, OK, cool. You. So maybe just, I know he's super busy. So I want to maybe get on a call because it's easier to communicate about that. Um, so yeah, thanks for saying, Manu. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, Sam, this is amazing. I appreciate what you said about, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start running on the video and text, which will be great. We'll have like a focused target project. and. Um, then we can work async in the GitHub issues. So let me know when you guys get that running. Um, is that helpful for you, Sam? Or did you want to discuss anything else about the design before we move on to the launching in two parts, uh, which may also affect this video content? Uh, we can go with the with the rest. Just want to say, I I, I have presented it, but I I always feel I, I always feel like. I am presenting the things that um, is. I have a, a team behind, and <laughs> I will just say, say that that uh, that was uh, the work of of Fiore, who could not be here today. But I would love she she received the, the prize for that. Well, praise Fiore, and we know we appreciate your humble nature and always recognizing others' work. This is really beautiful. So. Praise to Fiore and also the team because it takes a village. <laughs> and we can go with the with the next right. Hey, just a small question, Sam. Uh, I'm just wondering, what's like the domain that this is going to get pushed out to? Is this uh, can this be launched on the main website that's been developed, or or how does this work uh, with like? Because I think you're building this with Figma, which I'm not familiar with. Does this like deploy a whole website, or is this being does this create like a code base or? Actually, it's a design and it will be. It, it, we didn't uh, thought about that. We were thinking on putting it in hatch.tcommerce.org. But maybe it has sense to have it in the in the main website. Yes or no? Do, does it have sense? To me, it makes sense to have a hatch that uh, TC comments that org and maybe have like a banner on top of uh, of the whole website and say here is the hatching happening click there and then we redirect it right there. Okay, yeah, that, that has much much more sense. We we can announce the hats in the main in the main site. Yeah, with a banner. Great question, Sean. Thanks so much. I wasn't even thinking of that angle, and that's really important. Um, hopefully, we'll have the site done before that. Uh, that's a great idea. I like that um, thought to have the banner or something. Um, it can kind of live in its own home, but because we just have the one scroll, but we could make it like very huge. Great question. Thanks for asking that. I'm going to just take a note. You're muted, Thanks. Jess. <laughs> So yeah, I guess the next thing I kind of want to talk about because it goes along with this and developing the video content. Um, I was uh, the only one to block the post, uh, or I mean block the vote, and I wrote a post about why. So I would love actually to open up a little bit of dialogue on that um, to hear what you guys think. Um, because, oops. And some of the questions I think some can answer, and some of I just really would love to hear what other people think. Because a few things came up. I was chatting with Jeff um, 
who had to jump for another call. But um, we were discussing, I guess the main concern here, and this goes for like explain not only explaining the hatch, but actually going through the process. Um, I guess my kind of concern is like wanting to have an ins like ensure a fair, inclusive and successful hatch. So we don't really have, and I know this is partially onboarding group and we're helping with that, to develop some KPIs around our goal. Like we all want to have diversity and inclusive hatch. So what does this actually mean? Like what defines diverse? How many people do we want to have governance? Because when we're creating this DAO number one, like this dandelion voting, with this first out, it is basically like another governance layer. So I guess for me, the first question is, um, um, if for some reason we don't meet our goal that we, like for example, right now we have 194 like people that are like in from the CEC, like yes, they filled out the trusted seed application. We still don't know, we're waiting from legal to hear how the CSTAC token will play into that. But what if, you know, we also have a community of trusted seed with the common stack, we have, I don't know how many hundred people, like 400 people, we haven't, because of the common stack stuff, been able to engage with them. And that's going to take some time. So if we don't meet the goal, could we have some a second hatch before launching the bonding curve? Um, like say, you know, I guess, you know, we have one and only hatch and it's like a lot of pressure on onboarding and soft government comms to get like a really a good sized group that's very diverse and include all of our community and get them on board. Maybe not, maybe it'll just take one shot. We'll get like, you know, a couple of hundred or however many we think is good for a solid base for our foundation for the trusted seed. But if we don't, could we do a second hatch uh, before the bonding curve? Because it's kind of like a pre-sale and it's like, basically people are gonna have more governance and more of a chance to get the, you know, token at base level versus buying in after the bonding curve launches. So is that a possibility, Sim? Okay. I, I kind of did a, um, a quick reply in the, in the post and I can expand it a little, a little bit from the, um, it is very difficult to, to make the mm -hmm. contract understand um inclusiveness or this kind of stuff and we are just, as it is right now we are just taking into account how much uh, hatchers there are in the like, how, how much uh, money put the hatchers in it and we are limiting the amount of money that each each hatcher can can add into it so from the technical perspective it is done that way but we can also and uh, not launch the hatch be before we have, uh, we we are sure that a lot of uh, inc uh, a lot of different people can is going to be able to. Uh, we we have in <laughs> uh, a community that we are comfort comfortable with. Uh, Griff also, also replied to to that and, and said that the hatch should not we we should ex exclude the. Um, speculators from the hatch and I think that that's also a, an interesting perspective I don't think that they are mm -hmm. com I think that they, they are complementary we want uh, people who cares about the community inside the hatch but we don't want to include everyone that's mm -hmm. that's kind of the idea that I read from the conversation that is happening right now in the in the forum and the thing that I, that, that there were other complaints that I think that are super legit, and it, it I, I, I am, I, I am also well, actual, not, not complaints, sorry, com concerns. <laughs> My English sometimes it's not so good. Uh, there are other concerns <laughs> about the um, the timelines and how we can. Uh, and it's better to, to not uh, hatch before we have the things very clear. And I also I, I also agree with that. We have been doing demos uh, during, and we already have an MVP. And if we could, we could launch with what we have. But I would prefer to wait a little bit 
discuss much better what we are going to do before do, doing it. Actually, the right now there are very good um, connection between the legal group and the and the tech group, and we are trying to understand what what are the, impl the legal implications on what we are doing and maybe things change uh, a little bit more. We have to discuss some things. For example, uh, th there is the, the limitation of uh, how much money we can request as a maximum goal, things like that. Uh, we, we need to have uh, inf informed uh, decisions. And in order to have them, maybe we need more time in order to have a lot of people uh, understanding the uh, everything, uh, testing the, the things that the, the demos that we are uh, doing, we will have a, a kind of demo about these hats again. It's obviously not, it's not going um, it's not going to be as good as a uh, city. It it's just a demo on what what it, it will look like, but it's not going to include the the this design. It's not going to include any video, any text. It's going to be much more similar to the first thing that we had, but we are also going to include the the CSTK thing or at least a, a naive uh, implementation of the CSTK um, policy. So in, in small steps, we can approach to the things that we want to to make it look like. And as we go with these step, uh, little steps, we can discuss as a community what what is the direction that we want to take. I think that it's already happening in the forums, but it's not yet happening enough. So I, I, I think that it's very important uh, to, to make that make and I'm not sure if, if how, how we can do that. Also, Jake is is here. He's taking on. He 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 can. Um, he's quite new to the to the TEC, but he will coordinate the technical discussion of the parameters. This is not the only discussion that we have to have as as a community, but I think that he, he can help a lot with that. Uh, if if I I don't know if if you want to speak a little bit, Jake, and I would also like to hear the rest of us. Yeah, no, that's that's no problem at all. Thank you. Um, no, I I couldn't agree more. From what I've understood about this, it's not so much the amount of people, but the importance. Um, and moving forward with that for discussion, we have to have something to discuss. That's why these deep dives are so important. Um, we need some. We need. We need some real rhetoric. We need something for the forum, so we actually have something moving forward for the tech to actually get involved. Um, we can't do that until until these things are there to discuss. So not only do we need people to vote and contribute, but we really need we really need this open discussion there physically people can see. So we actually have something to discuss and talk about. Um, and yeah, I, I want to like to see, a, I, I really, I personally think too, you want to get all that right before the hat. So you actually have something to have, more importantly. So that's my two issues. Do we have already figured out like how much, uh, how much is going to be the cap for each person and how many people do we have? That's something that we have to decide. And from the technical uh, perspective, we are not going to decide these things. The, I mean, I, I have to, 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 to no. Um, in 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 tech, we are uh, going to work with. Uh, the, there is the Garden Swarm team that we are working with. The, we come from One Hive, and and we are working with. Sorry, I, I have to rephrase. Uh, from, when I talk about the tech team, uh, I mean the the people who is preparing the, the smart contracts, who is preparing the front ends, and 
eh, for example, Fiore, Bibi, um, eh, Fabi, eh, Rain. We, we are eh, all one hive members that are working in the gardens swarm, and we are uh, doing that. And then Jake and the, with the, the rest of the community of, of TEC is going to be documenting the parameters that we have to choose. Um, I mean, the, the parameters that we need to, to discuss and discuss them. So it's important to have that, that, that discussions inside the, the forum. And the tech team is just uh, detecting that we are constantly talking um, talking about the new technologies and, and all that stuff. We are just proposing a way to do the things and we are proposing some parameters that may or may not be what you choose. Uh, the, we are, um, for example, we are putting a max cap of 300 dice just to do the, the demo, but it's Obviously, we don't we don't go with 300 dice uh, for the real hatch. So, I, I I think that it's important to make that distinct that that distinction. That right now the the discussion on which parameters uh, we are we are going to have is quite and um, how is it called? Uh, it's it's the it's the late and Jake is taking on the, on it, but he's pretty new to the community, so he will need your help because yeah. he's going to <laughs> he, he's yeah, going I to. Be so. I feel like maybe we need some kind of a TLDR or maybe a whole meeting that's just like a presentation of parameters and allowing the community to do like Q&A because a lot of people won't engage with the forum, but they will engage verbally and they want to share their opinion. So that could be something we can do. And I do see that this is like a whole other discussion for onboarding group of what what is gonna define a successful launch for us? What, how, it, what, is it like obviously number or Livia? And if anybody else wants to speak um, on this a little bit now, but we can also have, this is gonna be like an hour discussion, I think too. Yeah, I want to say something on this. The um, parameters okay. are. Is it just me that can't of... hear? Nobody can hear me? No, I, I hear you. Not. I hear Livia. Okay, I'll refresh if you cannot hear. <laughs> I'll refresh. Can you hear me now? Okay, cool. I was going to say that uh, parameters are a huge part of the rules and boundaries. And discussing that in SoftGov, and there is a forum post about the last discussion we had uh, in the SoftGov working group, and Sam added a lot of very interesting points to it. And we started to break it down, some of the parameters, and what would, the, what would they mean for the community? So I think this is where we have to understand together what each one of these decisions will mean uh, to the cultural relationships that we have in the community and to the way uh, we act in the commons. So, so there is a lot going on in there already. I know it's hard to keep up with all of the forum posts and everything that's happening, but I think it's a good place to continue this conversation so all the thoughts are together in this same direction. And I think it would be super valuable to have a call once we have a little more of these questions to discuss all of them together with the tech team and SoftGov and comms. Um, so maybe I'll post that link in the, in the comms um, channel here on Discord. And if you guys have any questions, any topics that you would like to add, and then we can schedule that call for early next week, if that sounds good. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, absolutely. Tamara, you wanted to say something for some time? Yeah. I just wanted to hear everyone else first. 
since um, it's my third week. And uh, I think um, I'd like to say first, I love the way that there is so much discussion about this and that um, the, you, you know, there is the power of one person to have the, um, to, to say a blocker and start a conversation around all of the things that uh, need to be thought about. Um, I really liked this, um, the way you describe things. I think there's just a few points that I want to make to it, uh, and especially on the timing. Um, for the ideas of KPIs, and just from my understanding is we are sort of moving and building at the same, moving and planning and building at the same time. And I don't know, um, I, I don't know. Uh, I wonder if like our KPIs have to actually be too uh, complex or if they could actually be relatively simple. I'm uh, just throwing that out. Maybe they're, they're actually not co complicated enough to be a blocking point. Um, and then for the unclear timelines, um, there is, uh, you know, we've only been doing these sort of working sessions for the last week and we're, they're going to continue this week. So we're really starting to put um, timelines of projects um, on our Zen board. Um, Garden Swarm is in there now. Uh, conflict management is in there now. Um, and I would propose, uh, I would say at this juncture, we don't really still have a real timeline yet. The date, the dates in the roadmap are still um, not correct. They're fabricated essentially. And on the next sprint, one of the objectives is actually to make the timelines legitimate uh, based on when we're planning to do the issues and the, the next sprint where we can start to, to hone in on accurate timelines. So at this point, there's not so much I can contribute or we, we have at accessible in terms of like the moving pieces and timelines. We're still building that and we're getting closer. But for, um, for having a broad view of what is blocking the hatch launch from onboarding, tech param, swarm, communications, legal conflict from all of these points, I would like to float the idea that all of the groups go into their issues and label hatch critical path on the issues that are on the critical path to hatch, which out without which the hatch will not launch. And that way we can have a huge list from every group and in a meeting discuss them one by one. I love this idea, Tamara, because that's my main concern is like, I don't see the need to rush. And I'm concerned, like, I know we have this awesome thing, but having like a proactive outbound campaign and making sure that we can really engage the people we want to engage. I don't see how we would do that in two weeks. And I never want to stop tech because you guys are awesome. And you're like, I just, I don't see like, the need to rush like you mentioned some in your response and i don't see like yeah we could push really really hard and do it in two or three weeks but i don't see the purpose in that and i think if we are being like more conscious and intentional and trying to be inclusive um and also effective so i'm open but i like temra this like hatch critical label as a very practical way to handle that between groups that's visible so i Love that idea. Anybody else have anything they want to share? I'm making it right now, so it'll be in our repository. I have a question. Is that the idea? I to that I... Sorry. Just a quick question. Is that the idea to launch in, in three weeks? Is there, is there anything I, I think I missed? Guys, um, from the tech team, we tried to, I mean, we are delayed. Uh, this is why we are separating between the hatch and the rest. But from the from the tech team, we still have a, a lot of work to do. So the idea of separating was don't delaying the rest of the groups. If there is something that um, if we see as a community that we are not yet prepared for the technical team, that's perfect. <laughs> so uh, that's that's very good news for us. I just wanted to add that I really like the idea of having a TLDR um, because it's, it's a lot to digest. 
And maybe if we can have an email with all of these things that we shall definitely look at. I, I saw that Dan is here. Dan sent an email a couple of days ago. Um, maybe then if you can give us a hand with that, that would be really, really nice. No, certainly. <laughs> can you hear me? OK. Um, yeah, there are a couple of things. Like, um, of course, like uh, consenting, uh, the email I sent, link ad eight addresses to names of people, which is uh, is a bit blocker. Uh, there is some, some but I'm thinking about sending a new email, actually, either tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, it depends, but we need to come a lot of other people so it, the flow can, you know, yeah, I mean, and, and contacting and that status, it may take more time or it may take like intensive, uh, <laughs> uh, how do I say it, like human push notifications like, hey, 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 send you. So I was just in a random Zoom uh, talk with Ethereum Latam leaders and running to people that I know are in the trusted seat and was like, Hey, <laughs> so you know those those kinds of things. I mean, it's like um, uh, at least in that email, they were like uh, from the trusted seat, and we had like uh, seventy people confirmed so far. So yeah, I mean, ah, sixty-seven replies, so one hundred and twenty-eight people to go, which is a lot. So, so yeah, that that could hinder the. That that could stay as a blocker even for next sprint, unless you know, very human touch, very pushy. <laughs> yeah. So we've got just four minutes left for the meeting. So to wrap up, um, and Sam to answer your question, we are. I I don't feel ready at all. I see more like two months yeah, for the time. rather than two weeks to really develop how we need to with comms with onboarding because we do only get one good shot. And this is a, not just like us to push the tech, like this is a statement to DeFi, this is a statement to crypto, this is a statement for blockchain, and we wanna get it right. It's really, really important that we get it right and we do it consciously and we do it inclusively. So I'm so glad to hear that you're cool with this. I know Griff might be disappointed. I think it's good, take a breath, actually have a holiday, like and come back full power but be preparing so that it can be like obviously it's not going to be perfect <laughs> life is messy um but just doing the best we can to really include everybody in our community that is so fired up about it and give them a chance and yes we can have the hatch open for however long we want but like to do it with a bang and do it like properly and just like consciously so i hope that everybody's okay with that let's keep you know pushing the discussions in the forum i look forward jake to working with you i'll be happy to catch up and schedule a call on everything and we super appreciate you jumping in to help us to push these discussions and maybe have this call that we're talking about to open the dialogue to the community um the last two things i'm going to try to cram in in three minutes were um <laughs> Yeah, we still have a story canvas doc and the content creation handbook from Manu that could use some comments. I also need to go in there and comment. We also will have another um, onboarding like journey to the hatch uh, session this week. If anybody wants to join and help with the onboarding side, that's probably where we need the most help. And then if any ha anybody had bandwidth, I needed, I was going to ask for help with one thing. Um, Jeff has suggested Substack as a way to like have better uh, visibility of our medium. So anyway, I'll post in the comps channel a few things that we didn't have time for. Um, there was also one thing with Twitter. We actually discovered there's a TE underscore commons and there's a TE commons underscore. <laughs> if we wanted to change, I don't know if it's too late or for the hatch, we could have a better Twitter handle. We all have like 70 followers. It's mostly us. So anyway, I'll I'll put a few things in the comps channel. And I wish I had more time to, if, and Tamara, even if what you were saying, if you wouldn't mind going into the forum post and adding those points there um, and anybody else that I would love to, wish we had more time to hear everybody, but if you can jump into that launching in two parts forum post and put just even a few thoughts there, 
would be fantastic. And any last quick one minute thoughts or otherwise we can carry on in soft gov with Livia. So we can continue the discussion in the next meeting. I so appreciate everybody coming today and your presence is so valuable and super important and appreciate you guys being here. I'm constantly amazed <laughs> by all of you. So thank you so much. Hey, everybody have a great day. Thanks everybody. Bye.